Now we move on to the third technical session. A distinguished Assam Police Service Officer, Papori Chetia, is presently posted as additional superintendent of police at Special Branch Headquarters, Kahlipara. As a police officer, she has served in different capacities and has enormously contributed to the law and order situation of the state. She had served as Deputy Superintendent of Police in Bongaigao, Chirang and Morigao districts before joining the Bureau of Investigation of Economic Offences of Assam Police. She had then joined the Intelligence Wing of Assam Police at Special Branch Headquarters, Kahilipara, as Additional Superintendent of Police and is entrusted with the task of leading the team of Assam Police Social Media Center at Cyberdome, which is a prestigious greenfield project of the Assam Police. For her excellent and extremely dedicated service to the cause of law and order, peace and harmony, she has been the recipient of DGP's silver medal. She has got first-hand experiences of dealing with cases relating to gender justice and therefore is a befitting person to deliberate on the topic, role of police in delivering justice to women. It is indeed a matter of pride to have Madam Papuri Chetia with us today. With these words, I once again welcome you, Madam, and request you to kindly address the gathering. I also request Dr. Smriti Shikha Chaudhary to kindly felicitate Madam Papuri Chetia. Thank you, Dr. Smriti Shikha Chaudhary. Over to you, Madam, now. A very good afternoon to everyone present here today for the ceremony. I am really uh, honored to be able to represent a department that is the backbone of the criminal justice system. <coughs> to present it more emphatically, uh, I being a woman myself, it is seeking justice by a woman victim is more related. So my time is very limited between the uh, lunch and this uh, presentation. So I will go very quickly through my slides. Police, as you all know, uh, is a term uh, that has been inculcated in our minds from our childhood through Bollywood or Hollywood movies, right? So this is the, you know, in the Indian context, police is the, police is the uh, last one to arrive at the scene of crime. And in the Hollywood movies, it is the larger than life picture of a policeman who acts as the savior of the victims. So, it is both heroic and corrupt at the same time. I will not go into details of that. Coming quickly to the criminal justice system, uh, the components of criminal justice system in India are the police, the prosecution, the judiciary, the prison, and the correctional services. And the criminal justice process starts with the registration of the first information report, which is written by the police officer on receiving an information about commission of an cognizable offense. Our role as a police in the criminal justice system starts from there itself, from registering the FIR. I agree, there is a gap between, a huge gap between the expectations and the delivery of justice. But with the advent of technology, I believe there will be much proficient and speedy delivery of justice to the victims. Going quickly to the to your worldwide statistics, as you can see, Almost 35% of women have suffered sexual harassment or abuse from non-partners at some point in their lives. Men who witness their fathers abusing or harassing their mothers and men who experienced violence in their childhood from their home were more likely to report intimate partner violence as adults. I don't know how much, how much, how many of you would relate to this, but I have seen families where, you know, the when the uh, senior most uh, uh, male uh, in the family is, uh, in, you know, dominant in nature, and the wife is very submissive. Their kids, the boys in the family, have a tendency to treat 
their female counterparts or expect the same behavior from them. This is my practical experience in the field. Almost 49% of human trafficking victims are adult women. Almost 650 million girls are estimated to be married before 18 years of age. Almost 15 million girls from the age of 15 to 90 have experienced forced sex or rape. In a study, 40% to 60% of women said that they have experienced street harassment, mainly stalking, whistling, catcalling, sexual comments, sharing, obeying. Also, 31% to 64% of men said that they have carried out such acts. Coming to the data on crimes against women in India, it has increased by 15.3% in 2021, according to NCRD report. Not only number of cases registered, but the rate of crimes against women also increased. The rate, rate of cases registered by the women population increased to 64.5 in 2021, from 56.5 in 2020. A total of 438,278 cases of crimes against women were registered across India in 2021, marking an increase of 15.3% from 2020. Majority of cases under crime against women were registered under charity by husband or his relatives, followed by assault on women with intent to outrace her modesty, kidnapping and abduction of women, and rape. Data pertaining to, as you can see, types of uh, various types of crime against women. Data pertaining to this kind of conventional crimes against women, like domestic violence, rape, dowry death, kidnapping, honor killing, acid attack, child marriage, and so on, are you know, mostly available in the NCRD website. And so I will not <coughs> go into the details of these crimes against women. Rather. I would like to draw your attention to another form of crime that is very rampant nowadays and it is happening on the cyberspace. Cyberspace is the name given to the computer generated world of the internet and cyber laws are the regulations that apply there. During the COVID-19 pandemic, internet based cyber crime grew rapidly and intensively. Women and children were the most vulnerable parts of society during the pandemic, making them simple targets for cyber criminals, whereas men and adults were victims of several financial cyber frauds. Women were exposed to these during the pandemic, in particular housewives and those who use social media. Most of all of you must be aware of that. You all of you must have your social media accounts and during the pandemic you have seen that we were hooked to our mobiles and you know to our social media accounts and those who didn't have the social media accounts they have also opened during the pandemic and see i said that in a report that uttar pradesh saw the highest number of cases of sexually explicit content online followed by assam women are most commonly exposed to this kind of Crime, cyber crimes like sextortion, which is a crime where a victim is blackmailed using sensitive and in most cases doctored videos or photos. In a relatively new form of sextortion, you get a call uh, from some stranger or some uh, you know uh, known person, seeming seemingly known person, and you get a video call and once you pick up the call, the person on the other side starts sleeping his clock, his or her clock. And by the time you react to what is happening, the whole scene has been recorded and it is used for blackmailing the person. There are a lot of victims that have, that have come to us saying, and you know, uh, you will be surprised, you know, all uh, Educated people have fallen prey to such kind of sextortion and eventually they are blackmailed and they turn up giving money to the 
cyber criminals. Then there is another form of cyber crime that is phishing, which is a type of social engineering where an attacker sends a fraudulent message designed to trick a person who is revealing sensitive information to the attacker or to deploy malicious software into revealing sensitive information to the attacker or deploy malicious software on the victim's infrastructure, infrastructure to steal the data present there. Then we have cyber stalking. Cyber stalking is like, you know, is a kind of uh, stalking someone physically. It is, now it is very rampant. I, I would like to share a case where a bureaucrat uh, friend of mine once came to my office and he showed me a picture of a lady. And uh, he requested me to, you know, get access to her Facebook profile because he was unable to uh, he, he was blocked by the lady and was unable to get access to her Facebook profile. And then I inquired, why do you need uh, her account? And he was like, and then he came to send that. She, they, she is my ex-wife, now we are separated. I want to know what is going on in her life. So, I just want to, can you please help me? Do you have any hackers in your department who can help me getting her password? And and I just want to know if she is engaged with someone else. I just want to get into the messenger. You know, I just want to look into the chats that she, she is doing. So then I was like, uh, uh, what, what can I say at that time? And, and I counseled him for some time. And then I said, sir, like, you know, uh, if your wife comes to know about it, you will be behind a bus. Do you, do you know that it is a crime? and you cannot stop someone online. This is also a crime and please refrain from it. And, and if you have anything to know from her, go and talk to her. It is not the way. So this happens. Then uh, cyber hacking, as you all must have heard about the word hacking, which is, uh, you know, uh, every day you must be getting some uh, messages uh, through WhatsApp or SMS. You know, sending some, you have been selected for this interview, you have been selected for this job, you are, you are you know, uh, lottery, all this kind of, with tiny URLs. This is, this is, please, please be uh, aware of that. Never keep those tiny URLs. It is always in the form of bit.ly dot tiny URLs kind of uh, URL that you will see. And this is all malicious. Once you take that, you will land up in a different world altogether and the cyber criminals will get access to all the data on your phone or your laptop or any devices that you use. And then comes cyberbullying. It is again kind of a it's kind of a, a physical bullying uh, which is done online actually and mostly the targets are children where they are being isolated and they are sent, no, they are, they are under peer pressure to do something and if they cannot, they are under, they will be sent, uh, you know, uh, offensive messages and ultimately what happens, uh, what we have seen, it is, uh, it is, uh, it damages the mental health of the person immensely. So, and these are some of some of some of the uh, cyber crimes that I've been talking about. There are many more, but of late we have been facing some newer kinds of cyber challenges. This is one of the most popular is location-based dating apps. You must have heard about Tinder. You must have heard about OKQB kind of dating apps where you, you find someone as a companion, you know, it is said that roses are red and violets are blue. Please be careful when you are in the Tinder scams, it might be you. So, falling in, you know, uh, falling in love is a different feeling actually. So, and when people are lonely in the virtual world, what I have experienced in my life, people nowadays, in 
any generation, from the from the younger generation to the older generation, they are we are so hooked to the virtual world that we at the end of the day we are we feel very lonely and we are seeking for some kind of validation. We are seeking for a companion who would listen to us. And that is why this kind of apps like Tinder or OPQBIT and these dating apps are very popular among the mostly among the single person. And women are falling prey to it. <clears> Ten percent <throat> of the Tinder profiles are fake. Ninety percent are dead. Fifty-seven percent of the Tinder profiles lie to each other about their demographic details. They never, they will never, you know, uh, tell you the exact location or exact profile or exact uh, uh, your um, about your your number, the person. So these profiles are mostly. Uh, fake and run by cyber criminals. So stay alert, stay safe on these apps. Then revenge porn, non-consensual pornography involves the online distribution of sexually graphic photographs or videos without the consent of the individual in the images. The perpetrator is often an ex-partner who obtains images or videos in the course of a prior relationship and aims to publicly shame and humiliate the victim in retaliation for ending a relationship. However, perpetrators are not necessarily partners or ex-partners and their motive is not always revenge. Images can also be obtained by hacking into the victim's computer, social media accounts or phone and can aim to inflict real damage on the target's real world life. As I said, if you click on the malicious uh, URLs or the links, they get access to, the, to your device. Similarly, when you are installing an app in your mobiles, how many of you have uh, you know, apps that you hardly use? Can you, can you just can you raise your hands? Uh, how many of you have Facebook, Instagram, besides Facebook, Instagram, how many of you have apps that you rarely use? Hardly, you know, in, in a month or twice in a month? There are many actually. Please remove those apps. And while giving permission to those apps that you don't, you know, trust, you are giving access to your photos, to your chats, to your contacts, why do they need a video? I can understand a video uh, app, video editing app will require the access to the photo, photographs or the videos. But other than that, some apps are there which will require which your um, access to the photo gallery. Please be careful while giving, clicking those agree terms and conditions and licenses and please read carefully. So that is how they get access to those uh, your device and they extract the you know uh, photographs or the chats or the contact list from your device. Then another very important crime that is happening that is you know a headache for all of us actually this is the dark web crimes. You name it, you get it, everything there. From illegal drugs to human trafficking, everything is happening on the dark net. And this is something that is not searched through Google or Bing. This is not usually searched by this regular search engines. It is through Tor browser or onion router. It is called onion because there are layers and layers into it. So, this is like the onion. There are layers of encryption in the browser itself where anonymity is the first thing. So, once you are into the dark web, you are into a world 
where you get access to everything from, as I said, from drugs to human trafficking, to arms, to child sexual abuse material. So then we have uh, cyber sex trafficking, which is different from physical sex trafficking in that the victim does not physically engage with the perpetrator. Cyber sex trafficking is when a dealer broadcasts records or takes pictures of the victim engaging in sexual, sexual or intimate activities from a central location and then sells the content online to sexual predators and clients. The criminals have forced manipulated and blackmailed women into participating in cyber sex trafficking which constitutes sexual abuse of women. The online demand for child sexual abuse content makes children more vulnerable to this virtual predators, predators. As children spend more time online during the lockdown, they are often unsupervised. How many of you have, while giving the mobile or the device to your kids, have checked the parental co control in your device? How many of you have checked the YouTube while giving to your kids that there is some parental settings in there? Do you? Yes. Yes, that's very good. So be aware of that. While giving the device to the kids, be alert and ensure that it is under your supervision. Because these contents are <coughs> surging up like anything. And you know what happens, they are through chat room, uh, through uh, games, uh, chat room, through social media profiles, through Snapchat or Insta, mostly kids are into the Valorant game. So through this, they befriend a lot of unknown person in the virtual world. And eventually what happens, they are the predators are looking for someone who is feeling very lonely or they are looking for the, uh, you know, looking for uh, a uh, target. So what happens? The child is being lured and then again he is emotionally blackmailed and engaged into some offensive acts that is being used later on for blackmailing. A study by the New Delhi based independent think tank India Child Protection Fund in 2020 revealed disturbing facts related to cyber online trafficking and the availability of child sexual abuse material. The ICPF examined data from Pornhub, world's largest pornography website, that revealed traffic from India increased by 95% in March 2020, right after the imposition of national lockdown, as compared to pre-pandemic average traffic on their website. This increase was fueled by Pornhub after it made its premium content free of charge during the lockdown. A significant segment of this spike was attributed to the demand for child pornography content. The ICPF found the demand for child pornography material only on the public domain was an average of 5 billion per month in 100 cities. The study further found the demand for specific content where the person was interested in specific actions, age groups, locations, etc. And we were surprised to know that one of the places from where this has been accessed is Bahani. Assam is one of the hubs from where, and particularly, more particularly, Bahati is one of the places from where these kind of contents are viewed. And India is one of the top most countries in the world where, from where, these type of contents are uploaded. This is very shocking and alarming. Then, coming to the role of police in tackling all this, as as I said, this is our role is to conduct and assist in investigations where information and communication technology devices, various IP addresses, browser history, websites, and mobile apps are the vehicle or target for the commission of criminal acts, creating awareness among the citizens along with other stakeholders. 
reaching out to the larger population through modern communication systems like social media, messaging apps, enabling response mechanisms through help like numbers and counseling. Although I am running, uh, running out of time, but I would like to discuss a case where uh, a lady was counseled by us, actually, I will go to a previous slide, if you, if you permit uh, me some more time. Uh, this is a screenshot that I, I, I am putting here. This is a conversation that uh, our helpline. We have a, a sample social media center. You know, we have a reconstructed uh, system where you can conduct our guidance for our future handle or the sample handle. And you can you know, uh, send us uh, your queries or requests. Uh, there was a this lady who uh, befriended a uh, boy in Facebook and and she was going, you know, she fell in love with this guy and she, uh, uh, this guy promised her to, uh, he is from, he is a doctor from London and he will come here to marry her and this lady is from a different district, from Kokraja and even eventually one day, uh, uh, she came to know that this guy is coming here to Bahati and from the and he calls from the airport and says that I have been abducted by a policeman and they are asking for some money to release me. She from Kokraja she came to Bahati airport and she has uploaded photographs from the airport and she was waiting for the guy to leave. Then uh, suddenly um, she, when she got a message, when she got the call that police have uh, wants money to release him, then she contacted us. She, uh, through our handle and through phone line, uh, then she said, "Please help me. I need help from you. And your people have are asking money to raise my husband. She has already posted her picture with that man as husband and wife. And then she started, you know, she started uh, posting all this. They are jealous of me. I need help. These, these are the communications that are happening with us. Actually, this is this is with the Assam Police help and this communication that are happening with us. So." She, she ran, uh, no, she was literally begging us. Then uh, we got into action. We could found that there is no such person in the airport. We checked all the uh, no entries there. We checked the phone numbers. We found it in the, some different uh, parts of the country. And then we called her to the police station and we tried to counsel her. But she was totally in a denial mode. No, 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 I think this, this, this can, ha, can't be her. True. He is my husband. We are married virtually. So he has come to pick me up from here. So he, he, you are lying. You are lying. This cannot be true. It took us two days to come to this lady and to you know, take out of that emotional trauma that she was going through. Then finally, finally, she agreed that. That person has already siphoned a lot of money from her, but she refused to disclose the amount of money actually. But we could make out that it, it will be around less of rupees that she has already delivered to that person. So, why befriending someone unknown in the Facebook? Please be aware of that. And coming to the last part, uh, this is a mechanism. To deal with cyber crimes, this is like you know information technology rules have been implemented through which uh, <laughs> through which the intermediaries are made accountable, like Facebook or Instagram, that they were made accountable through these rules. They are, but a lot needs to be done. Then we have I4C, Indian Cyber Coordination Center, under the Ministry of Home Affairs, where you can report who is who is working in a. For this uh, cyber crime, in cyber crime, then we have national uh, cyber crime reporting portal. You please note on this portal, and there is a toll-free number one nine three zero. Please note on this number. This is a brand new year twenty four zero seven number, which is helpful if you are a victim of financial fraud or any kind of cyber fraud. You can report immediately at this number, and with your details, whatever has been. Uh, money uh, has been gone or has been due. So, 
you can report instead of going to some fan or looking after uh, looking for someone known in the police department, please dial up this number and you can get a better chances of recovering your money. Then we have cyber police station the CID itself to deal with the cyber crimes. Again, cyber forensic training labs in the Northern states of Saga. And under this scheme, we have provided first responder key to the police stations for extracting the digital evidences from the scene of crime. So that's it for today. Actually, I wanted to discuss few case studies, but due to the shortage of time, I won't be able to do that. But, but then thank you. But I, I would like to uh, show you a two-minute video uh, of what we have been working on, uh, you know, dealing with this cyber crime scenario. And this is on the process actually, and we are waiting for approval. This is an app that we are developing. for a very, very pertinent, impactful and enriching lecture. Your deliberation has brought forward the magnitude of crimes against women, including those in the cyberspace. Most significantly, you have focused on how virtual world can be a threat to us and how we need to be cautious while operating in the cyberspace. Thank you once again, Madam, for being amidst us today and for your stimulating deliberation.